If you're looking at the Hollyland Cosmo 600 series, you're probably already more than aware of how wireless video comes in handy on set. And you also probably know the name Teradek. It's an industry standard. But what if you could do the same thing as the Teradex, but for cheaper? Well, let's talk about that. Before we hop into this review, I just want to let you know, this is part two of a three-part series on two of Hollyland's wireless video systems. I was going to do them both in one video, but since I think they're aimed at two different markets, it's only fair that they're judged individually based on their intended use. So uh, you can jump back to part one to check out the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro, or if you're just interested in comparisons, you can skip ahead to part three where we'll talk about both of them. This is the Hollyland Cosmo 600, or more specifically, this is the transmitter from the 600 system. It has an advertised range of 600 feet line of sight, features HDMI and SDI input, and will transmit uncompressed 1080p footage at up to 60 frames per second with zero latency. Now throughout this video, you'll hear me reference Teradex a few times. While this isn't a direct head-to-head -head, since I don't have one here to test, I do have experience with them, and I wanted to see if the Cosmo 600 would serve as a viable lower cost option for people who, like me, are paying for all their gear themselves and can use the extra cash they'd save to invest in lighting or audio or something of that nature. Now, I'm a big believer in buy once, cry once, but being able to have someone pull focus for me is more of a luxury than a necessity. So I thought maybe I could save some cash here. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Here it is. This is the Hollyland Cosmo 600. Once you pull it out of the box that it ships in, uh, you'll see this. This is the waterproof case that it comes in and just like most Pelican style cases, it just has these two little latches and nice touch here that these actually stay out. The cheapo ones you can get at Harbor Freight will fall back down and make it impossible to close the box. So nice little touch there. So in here, you've got your transmitter and your receiver. Now on the transmitter on the front, you have your menu button. So you've got up, down and menu. And then on the side, you've got a USB connection for updating firmware, things like that. You've got an HDMI in and you've got an SDI in, as well as an SDI loop out. So you can actually go through the transmitter and then out to whatever monitor you're using. On the other side here, you've got a power switch. You've got a two pin DC power connection and a stereo in. So you can actually send audio out from the camera through the transmitter over to the receiver. And then on the back here, you've got your Sony NPF style battery plate. And it's got this nice little locking release latch here which is great and then on the top you've got your antenna inputs on the receiver well you've got a little bit more girth to it <laughs> so you've got the same setup on the front with the buttons and the screen and then over here on the left side you're going to have your power switch and your dc connection again just like on the other one and then on this side, you'll have your USB connection, again, just for firmware updates, things like that, and HDMI out, and two SDIs out. And then on the back here, same Sony MPF style battery plate, so all really well designed. And then if you lift off this top layer of foam underneath, you get all of your accessories. And I'm so excited that all of this is included in the box. So you've got your little warranty card thing here, uh, you've got your manual, which most of us will read and those of us who enjoy pain will not. And then you've got your after sales card. It's like, hey, you want to, it doesn't matter. Inside, you've got your antennas. So here's your rabbit ear samurai sword style antennas. And there is a extra one, a replacement one, just in case. Then you've got your little magic arm here. And uh, this one's actually quite strong. I've, I've tried this out already. I really like this. You've got a USB cable for all your updates and stuff like that. Here's another clamp that you can use to attach your receiver to a stand, uh, which is great. You've got your power adapter and a uh, little USA wall plug that you can use. And then the great part is that this actually comes with a second set of antennas. So these mushroom antennas are used when there's a, a you know, quite a height difference between the receiver and the transmitter. I'm pretty sure I'll end up always using these because uh, I never know if I'm going to be higher or lower. I like to move around a lot while I'm shooting. And 
oh my gosh, I'm so happy because there are power connectors in the box. So to power your transmitter on your camera, you can use this two pin power supply to go to the D-tap on your camera or your battery. And that's gonna be so helpful. That means I don't have to attach a battery to the back of this. You can, if you want to, you can use the Sony NPF uh, style batteries, but uh, it, to reduce weight and stuff, this cable is a godsend. And it comes with two of those, so you can use one for your transmitter and one for your receiver, both at the same time. So a really well-rounded kit, something that lets you have a lot of options for how you wanna use it, because you can also power your receiver off of wall power if you're into that kind of jazz. And uh, it's all packs up really nicely into this one teeny tiny box. And it's waterproof. Now design wise, there's not too much to complain about. The screen is very easy to read outdoors in bright sunlight. There's multiple mounting holes along the bottom and it has metal construction instead of plastic crap, which I always appreciate. Uh, the transmitter weighs nine ounces, so just over half a pound of weight that you'll have to add to your rig. It's about the same as most Teradex I've used, maybe a little smaller. The receiver weighs a whole pound, but the antenna are built in here. It's about the same size as an iPhone 12 Pro Max, maybe a little bit bigger, but that gives you a general idea. As far as connecting them goes, it's fairly simple. Uh, you turn on both units, set them to the same channel, and you boogie. I don't though, because I can't dance. Now, all jokes aside, on the receiver, you can do a channel scan to make sure you're not on a channel that has inordinate amounts of interference. I would recommend doing this periodically throughout the day, as interference can change depending on you know, what room you're in, uh, if there's more cell phones around than there were earlier in the day, all that jazz. Now, the big pull for this system over something in Hollyland's Mars series is the advertised zero latency. Your signal is transmitted in under one millisecond to the receiver. This is what makes having a remote focus pull system a viable option on set. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about zero latency versus ultra low latency. All of the transmitters in Hollyland's Mars series are ultra low latency, and you'll get ranges of 120 milliseconds to 80 milliseconds of delay, of latency. The term zero latency is more of a marketing term than a truth thing. Uh, the zero latency means normally about one millisecond or less. So it's imperceptible latency, but it, it, it does still exist. But enough about marketing turns and clearing up the English language, let's talk about latency on this. I've done a test to see how much latency is introduced by the Cosmo system. First, we need to establish a baseline for latency, keeping in mind that your monitor has to process the signal coming into it, so there is inherently latency with any running of any cords to anything. Here, we have an HDMI cable running from my C100 directly into this seven inch monitor. When we pause, you can see that our monitor introduces about 100 milliseconds of latency. And here's what that latency looks like with some quick motion. Now we'll switch over to the Cosmo 600. If we pause and take a look at a single frame, you can see that the latency introduced by the wireless transmission is basically non-existent. I mean, you're still looking at that same 100 milliseconds of latency, so it matches our baseline. And here's some of that quick motion again. In my experience, using both the Cosmo and Teradex, the latency feels exactly the same. Your monitor response time is the only latency you'll actually feel, and you can reliably pull focus just as well on one system as you can on the other. Then there's the range. Hollyland claims up to 600 feet of transmission with line of sight, so we put that to the test. So we're gonna do a range test on this. Um, the thing is that uh, a lot of people, they just kinda like count out their steps and stuff, and I wasn't quite sure that that was an accurate representation of length that they're going. So I built this with my good buddy, Chris. Um, it's a GoPro attached to an $8 measuring wheel thing. And then we've got the transmitter attached up here. Uh, we're using so many clamps that, I mean, clamps from Futurama would be embarrassed. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna roll on this camera right here. And that's recording the screen that's got the receiver attached to it. And uh, we'll see how far it can go. And then we should be able to tell at exactly how many feet the transmission cuts out. Um, because uh, we've got the little wheel here counting up every foot that we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll on that. And we're rolling. All right, here we go, starting in line with the transmitter and off we go. Still good signal wise? Still good. That's five. 
No dropouts? It's starting, to, it's still getting, it's starting to get a little fuzzy, like here and there. Okay. Just as long as it hasn't dropped out yet. No. But the fuzziness is still there. Getting a little fuzzier now. 960. And that's a thousand feet. Yeah. You coming back? Uh, I want to see when it actually drops. Oh. We're at 1200 feet. But it's getting fuzzier. More you go. Does it seem like it's dropping frames? A little bit, yeah. Like I can, there's, I, there are times I can read the numbers and times I can't. It dropped. Oop, there we go. Oh, it's back up. Thirteen hundred, drop out. But it's back up now, so. I'm going around a corner, so it's probably going to lose it. I get the dropped. That's gone? Yeah, it dropped. Now, range-wise, the Cosmo 600 gives stellar performance up until about 450 feet. Um, after that, you start getting some lost data, which shows up as these lines of static. And as you get further away, things get progressively worse. I would say that realistically, for a clear signal, you want to stick to under 400 feet. But you can certainly go a lot further before things drop out completely, unless you have obstructions in the way. Walls, cars, whatever it is, you'll notice a drop in signal strength if anything gets between the units. But that's how pretty much all wireless transmitters work. I will say Teradex do seem to handle this a little bit better than the Cosmos, but... I guess that's where some of the price difference comes in. And our experience in the environment we had with power lines running along the whole stretch of road that I walked down could have had a negative impact on the transmission. Also, we were using the mushroom antennas instead of the rabbit ear antennas, so that could have impacted performance as well. In some of Hollyland's own tests, they showed that they went 1,000 feet and the signal was fine the whole time, but they were using the rabbit ear antennas. I know, I should have tested them both, but the sun was going down and rain was coming and my camera was outside and my wife was cold, so we went inside. I'm sorry I failed you. Now something worth noting when it comes to range, one time when we were using it on set of a commercial we were shooting, we had the transmitter and receiver about a foot away from each other and could not get signal. <laughs> then we backed the transmitter up about six inches and signal reappeared. So that was weird. All right, so the only thing we haven't talked about is image quality. Now my goal was to see what sort of image shift, if any, the Cosmos 600 introduces. To see how things change between a wired setup and a wireless one, I ran an HDMI cord directly from my camera into a capture card, then into the computer for a control test where I recorded in OBS. Then I added the wireless transmitter into the middle of the signal chain to see how the image changed. Here's the control, and here's the wireless transmission. And just for kicks, here's wireless with the SDI port out of the camera instead of the HDMI. There's virtually no difference between the three images. The Cosmo isn't compressing the image, so when you have a strong signal, it's transmitting everything that's coming out of your camera's HDMI or SDI port. That means that as long as your monitor is accurate, you can rest easy knowing the image being transmitted will match what you're getting in camera, or at least whatever LUT you've applied to that output. Um, keep in mind though, you are limited to 1080p. On the C300 Mark III, for instance, if you try to send out a 4K signal from the SDI out port, the Cosmo won't even notice it. It won't accept the signal. But if you go out of the monitor out port, which can scale the signal down to 1080p, even when re you're recording in 4K, it will get a 1080p uh, signal at whatever frame rate you're shooting it and then send that on to the receiver. Now, if you're watching all three parts of this series, you can skip ahead to part three to hear all my comparisons and thoughts on use cases. Um, but if you're just interested in the Cosmo 600, we'll get into that right now. The Cosmo 600 is good for most scenarios where you want to be sending wireless video. Hands down, it just is good. Um, especially wireless focus pulling situations where you need fast response time, which we've used it in real world scenarios for and have been very happy with. If you're needing to feed multiple monitors, you can use both SDI outputs at the same time on the receiver, enabling not only your focus puller to get a feed, but also a second monitor for the director or for Video Village. It's a solid option with performance that you'd expect at this price point. But 
I wouldn't say it's quite punching above its weight, but if you're gonna spend this much money on a wireless video system, wouldn't it be better to just go ahead and spend another $800 or so on a Teradex system? Well, maybe. I mean, Teradex are a standard. They're reliable, and if the signal does drop, you won't hear the producer blaming you for your cheapo gear. So maybe the peace of mind is worth it for you in that case. Uh, plus, with the new Teradex, you get 4K transmission, whereas the Cosmo is limited to 1080p. There's reasons to seriously consider the Teradex as an investment. That being said, in the time I've spent with the Cosmo 600, it has performed very well, and I do not regret buying it. Someday, I will probably sell this and move on up the ladder to a Teradex system. But for right now, this enables me and my small crew to work with wireless, zero latency video, and has allowed me to use the money I saved to purchase other tools that improve what actually ends up on the screen, not just adding convenience on set. In short, I think this is a really good budget option. And if this is a hobby for you, or you're just getting started and you're not consistently working on sets where a 4K wireless feed is called for, I think you would be absolutely crazy to spend an extra dime over what this costs. And hey, if you happen to catch it on sale for about $1,300 like I did, I'd even go so far as to say it's a pretty good deal. Hey, thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. Like I said earlier, this is part two of a three-part series. So if you wanna learn more about the Mars 400S Pro in depth, you can jump back to part one. Or if you wanna see how these two devices compare to one another, you can jump ahead to part three. So yeah, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you hated it, you can do that. And if you loved it, you can hit subscribe and you'll see my face more often in your feed. Or not, I don't know if the algorithm likes me.